Hello, everyone. I'm Vincenzo Cala, and welcome to Meet the PMs, Episode 8. Today, we will be meeting Canada's 8th Prime Minister, Sir Robert Borden. Sir Robert Borden was born in Grand Pre, Nova Scotia on June 26, 1854. He was a very successful lawyer before entering politics, having the largest law practice in the Maritimes at that time. He first started getting involved in politics in 1896 when he decided to run for an election. Sir Robert Borden became Prime Minister on October 10, 1911 and served until July 10, 1920. He represented the ridings of Halifax, Carleton, and Kings. He was a member of the Conservative Party and later the Unionist Party. So Robert Borden died in Ottawa, Ontario on June 10th, 1937. So Robert Borden had accomplishments and he had failures. His biggest accomplishment was furthering Canada's re reputation during the First World War. So Robert Borden was, of course, Canada's wartime Prime Minister during the First World War. The Canadian Expeditionary Force, it started off as a division, but throughout the war, it grew and grew and grew and became a full corps and it became respected. Now, Canada went to World War I through Britain. They were automatically um, in the war because of Britain, but they assisted and we gained our own sort of reputation there, especially through our presence at Vimy and Passchendaele. Uh, that helps further Canada's standing in the world. His biggest failure, however, was uh, tariffs and high cost of living that happened following the end of the war, which eventually led to the Winnipeg general strike. And later he retired, resigned a year after that, not even a year after. His biggest, his second biggest accomplishment was creating a unionist government. This meant that uh, during the war, both conservatives and liberals um, joined together to form sort of uh, a coalition style thing, but they were together as unionist and they got more done this way. However, it wasn't viewed positively because conscription. Now this goes into the second biggest failure because the second biggest failure was the collapse of the voluntary military recruiting system during the war. Um, so this meant that the whole volunteering for war thing kind of fell apart. So they had to do conscription, which is why they did this unionist government. This led to the implementation of the Military Service Act. So that's what allowed for conscription. His third biggest accomplishment was the nationalization of the Canadian Northern Railway, which helped explain, expand the national railway system. This sort of helped continue what Johnny started and what the others started um, many years before that at the beginning, trying to expand that railway. Now, Sir Robert Borden's third failure wasn't um, much of a failure, but something that was and still is viewed negatively by Canadians, and that was the creation of the War Measures Act. Now, the War Measures Act um, was sort of, a, it, it doesn't exist anymore in the 80s, Brian, Prime Minister Brian Mulroney changed it to the Emergencies Act, but the War Measures Act basically gave governments full power to do whatever they need to, to do things during times of crisis. It was used during the FLQ crisis by Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, um, and that sort of, um, it was not seen well by Canadians, and uh, today it's the Emergencies Act, which was just used for the first time in February 2020 over the trucker convoy in Canada. And something else as well was the more taxes for the war that wasn't seen well by Canadians either because did you know the income tax that Canadians still pay was supposed to be temporary for the war and those were that still exists today. Today, Sir Robert Borden is remembered as Canada's wartime prime minister. He's especially remembered because of his many actions during World War I, including the expansion of the military and growing the reputation of Canada. However, he's remembered in a negative light because of the unease in Canada following the war, most especially that Winnipeg general strike. So final recap of Sir Robert Borden, Sir, from 1911 to 1920, Further, Canada's reputation and standing drilled during World War I, but created an uneasy environment in Canada following the war. 
In the future, Sir Robert Borden will be remembered as Canada's wartime prime minister. So that is all for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed learning about Sir Robert Borden. You can check out for some more videos about all the Canadian prime ministers on this channel. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so you never miss a video. Make sure also check out my website, VincenzoCali.com. Follow VC Productions 25 on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok. So until the next video, I'm Vincenzo Cala, signing out. Meet the PMs is a Vitala production.